In the last few videos, we saw how to understand Kubernetes with an architectural diagram and we saw what is a service, what is a deployment. We created a load balancer as a part of the service. We deployed different instances of a Spring Boot application and we saw how to create these as a part of a YAML which we can generate out of the box. In this video, we are going to see the different deployment strategies inside Kubernetes and we are going to try two of them as a part of this particular video. So we're going to use the Kubernetes engine inside the Google Cloud platform in order to try these out. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any updates from Tech Timers. So I am presently logged in inside my Google Cloud Platform account. This is a free tier account, nothing complex. It is just a free tier account which I created, which you would have seen from the last few videos as well. What I'll do is I'll create the cluster before we discuss what are the different deployment strategies so that we will allow Google Cloud some time to create this particular cluster. So the cluster name which I'm going to give is Tech Primer Cluster 1. This is the same cluster name which we had been creating right from the first few videos. And I'm going to create three different nodes in the cluster. So by default, it provides a three node cluster with the standard cluster edition. But if you want to have only one node cluster, you can still go ahead and create it. So I'm going to click on the create option and let's jump on to the presentation which I have created. So this is the general diagram which we have been seeing in the last few videos. Right, so this is the Kubernetes architecture where we see a master running, master controls the complete cluster and the deployments. The green boxes are the deployments where our applications are running. So we created a Spring Boot application, wrapped up it into a Docker image and we pushed that into a container registry, which is the Google container registry. It is similar to a Maven repository where we host all our artifacts. And while deploying into Kubernetes, Kubernetes will directly pick these images from the container registry and Kubernetes leverages them. So the green boxes are the deployments where our Spring Boot application is running. The orange one is the service. So inside Kubernetes, the application processes which are running inside the pods are called as deployments and the service is a intermediary layer using which you can communicate with these pods. So service is basically a REST object where you can have the load balancers, DNS and the node ports enabled in them. So this is the general architecture which we discussed in the previous videos. Let's simplify this and let's look at the important components inside these clusters so that we can remove the unnecessary parts which we already understood. So this is how it looks like, right? So you have a service, you have different deployments. These deployments are basically same instances of applications running inside the cluster and service is where you will be exposed with the external IP address or a DNS name using which you can interact with these pods or the deployments. If you remember the last video where we deployed a Spring Boot application, we created three replica sets, basically three instances of the same application running and we were leveraging the service as a load balancer and we were interacting with these pods using the service. We are going to take the same example and the same Spring Boot application However, we are going to see the different deployment strategies. So last time we just created an application and deployed, but we are going to update the application with a new version as a part of this deployment strategies. So there are four different deployment strategies. These are concepts. Some concepts are supported by Kubernetes out of the box. For example, recreate and rolling update is something which Kubernetes provides in the platform out of the box. And blue, green and canary deployments can be done using the about to. So as a part of this particular video, we will see recreate and rolling update, which forms a basis for the blue green and the canary deployment. So as a part of recreate, we will be destroying all the instances which we have deployed and we will be recreating new instances. So as the name suggests, it's blindly going to recreate your instances. This is mostly used when you don't want to add additional headache by creating new pods because every time you create a new pod, you will be charged for it, right? So you don't have to worry about that when you want to do a recreate. So these are useful when you want to have development environments or applications and you don't want to worry about the resiliency of the application and you're just okay with destroying and recreating them. That's when you will go for a recreate deployment strategy. 
let's try doing this inside the cluster let's check out if the cluster is created and i can see the cluster is up and running so there are three cluster nodes inside this and as usual i'm going to open the cloud shell using the cloud shell i'm going to interact with the kubernetes cluster i'm not going to use my command line interface to log into the gcp so i'm leveraging the cloud shell meanwhile let's go back to the google cloud platform and go to the container registry to check if our images are present there so i built these images a week ago as a part of the last video we have the images here so it is inside gcr io my project id the spring boot and there are two versions v1 and v2 so you can also leverage the same image i'm also going to do the same and i have made this public so that you can directly take it so let's look at the cube.yaml which we created last time so the cloud shell is logged in i'll go into the spring boot example which i already checked out here so i'll just do a ls I created a file called cube.yaml last time if you remember and this is the kubernetes yaml configuration for deploying inside the cluster so the first part is the deployment the second part is the service uh, in this video anyway we are not going to touch the service part because we are going to keep the service as is however we are going to change the deployment see that there is a v2 which we deployed last time now as a part of our deployment we are going to deploy v1 because there is nothing in the cluster right now so we will deploy v1 as is to understand how we can do the recreate strategy so there is again a configuration so if you look at this particular website this is nothing but the kubernetes documentation on the yaml definition and i'm going to go to the v1 beta 1 which is what we are using if you look at this we are using the extensions v1 beta 1 i'm using the same i'll go to deployment inside the deployment there is something called as a spec. So spec has again a link to another documentation and this has different options. For example, replicas, selector, template. So we are right now using the replicas and the template and there's something called strategy here. This is nothing but the deployment strategy which we would like to use as a part of our Kubernetes pod creation. So the deployment strategies which we saw, the recreate and the rolling update, these are the pod creation techniques or the deployment strategies inside Kubernetes. Now let's go and uh, add the strategy. So there is this new spec called strategy. So we are going to do that. So we'll just say strategy and we have four replica sets. Basically there will be four instances of the application running. So if you look at this diagram, we had only three here, but we are going to use the fourth one as well so there will be four instances of the same application running inside the cluster now coming back to the documentation let's go inside the strategy again strategy has a sub list of things which you have to define and there's something called type and the type says type of deployment can be recreate or rolling update so if you related to this these are the ones so it can be either recreate or a rolling update and by default it is rolling update but we are going to use recreate first right so let's go back to the strategy under the strategy we will have to go to type and the type is recreate so i'm going to add recreate that's it so that is what i wanted right so let me go back to the guy yes and there is one more property called rolling update that we will have to provide only if the deployment strategy type is rolling update which we're not bothered about right now because we are going to use the recreate option and that's it right so i just saved this and we are deploying v1 right so we are deploying v1 right now so let me clear these since this is the first time i'm deploying and logging in i need to log into my cluster so i'll use the gcloud command so i'll take it from the confluence which we did last time so i'll use the same gcloud containers cluster which is the same command to log into my cluster right now right so this will log into my cluster because i created the cluster before i launch the cloud shell so i'm logged in now let's see what all things are running kubectl get pods kubectl get services nothing kubectl get deployments so these are the ones which are running there is nothing right no resources found on everything and there's only a cluster ip which is present so let me do a clear again now let's deploy the application so we are going to say kubectl apply 
hyphen f and the cube.yaml which we modified right now so this will deploy our application to four different plots the kubernetes now says created and let's go and check if it is up and running i already see all these up and running let's go and see what are the different services there should be one called load balancer yeah the load balancer is up however the external ip is getting registered with the google cloud platform so that we can access it right so this is by default linked with the gcp so that we can access it outside the cluster let's try and say kubectl get deployment and there's only one deployment called the spring boot example and that is what we are using it right now let's check if the services got created so that we can hit the rest endpoint and access it yeah it's got created i'll copy this so the spring boot application is up and i have an endpoint called lazy which you would have seen in the last example right this is v1 so v1 has something called hello youtube and v2 has something called hello tech primers so these are the two versions which are there inside the container registry i'm going to use these so that i can show different deployment since this is the first time we deployed we did not see any deployment strategy because it did not destroy anything which was already present now in order to apply the new change we need to add the new image right so let me open the cube.yml we need to update this particular image So we were using v1 and right now we are using a different version of the same image so in order to upgrade our application it is the same command kubectl apply hyphen f and cube.yaml so this is what i'm running kubectl apply hyphen f cube.yaml so we're just upgrading it right so it and kubernetes will be intelligent enough to identify what's happening so let's do the kubectl get pods and see that it's terminating all the pods and uh, there were four pods running right when we last time saw and see that everything is getting destroyed and creating see that now it's all running so if you compare to what we discussed so we said there were deployments before and as a part of the recreate it first destroys all the running deployments and then recreates them so that's what happened as well when we did a kubectl pod there was only one pod which said terminating the other pods already got terminated and when we said kubectl pods again we see all the four running and if i hit the same rest endpoint it should work and it returns hello tech primers so this is the new version which we deployed and it works perfectly as expected this is how we can do a recreate strategy inside kubernetes now let's look at what is a rolling update rolling update is when you want to deploy a new version of your deployment without having any downtime to your application so we will be deploying a new version of this particular deployment a new pod will be created and once the new pod is up and running and it is ready to be served the old one will be destroyed that's how rolling update happens once a pod is good the same thing happens for all replicated instance inside the deployment so this is how a rolling update is done so i'll just summarize once again so when we deploy a new instance of the application a new pod will be created and the existing pod will be destroyed after the new pod is up and ready to be served and this happens for every replica set so it doesn't destroy anything directly it just creates a new instance and once a new instance is up and running the link gets changed to a new instance and then the old instance gets destroyed that's how a rolling update happens now let's try doing a rolling update inside our cluster so we already have four instances running so let me open the cube.yaml again here we added the strategy type as recreate now we have to add the strategy type as rolling update so we can go to the documentation and see what is the value rolling update u caps update and we need to add one more section called as rolling update so let's add it and under that obviously it is again a list under this there is something called max unavailable the maximum number of pods that can be unavailable during the deployment so i don't want anything to be going down i will say unavailable as zero you can have zero 
this makes sure that nothing goes down. So new pod will be created and the existing pod will be retained. However, if let's say you want to have a resource constraint and you want to reuse an existing pod, then if you make one as unavailable, that, that basically destroys the pod similar to how we did the recreate. However, only a subset will be impacted. So in my case, I don't want to have any node, uh, any downtime. So I want to have a no downtime deployment. So I'll just say zero and max surges the maximum number of pods that can be scheduled above the desired number of pods. Basically, how many uh, instances of the new pods can be created? So we already have four. I don't want to have more than one. So I'll just say max surge as one. So this will make sure that at a time there can be only five pods running. So that's what we are going to do. So let me save this and let's try deploying it. Now already we deployed v2. In, in the new case, I'm going to deploy v1 back again. I don't want to deploy v3, but let me revert it back because last time when we deployed, we had the hello tech primers, right? Now if I deploy the v1, it should return hello YouTube. Now let me deploy it. kubectl apply f cube.yaml. Now let's do the cube uh, CTL get pods. This will now show that each and every pod is getting created one by one. So see that now we have like four plus uh, three plus three, six, because one is getting destroyed and one is getting created. And see that this is happening one by one. See that now there are only four pods running at a time. Right. Now let me go back to this URL and hit it should say hello YouTube. Yeah, I can see this. this is returning hello YouTube. Now, I don't know how um, this happened. So this happened very quickly because I couldn't even see how it happened. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some delay for the Kubernetes cluster to validate if it is up or not. So right now, by default, it is making sure my uh, cluster is up and running. So there is a section inside template where we can leverage that particular property to say check my new pod after a particular period of time. So let's look at that particular property. Let me go to the um, template section here. Let's go to deployment. Under deployment, there is a spec. Under the spec, there should be a template. So under the template, there is something called spec. So inside the spec, we have something called containers, right? So where is it? So inside the spec, we have containers. For a specific container, I can delay the health check endpoint and I can also give the health check endpoint. So right now it's not having a health check endpoint. So what's happening is Kubernetes creates a pod and immediately assigns it. But I'd want to make sure my application is up and then only it should validate, right? So let me go to containers and inside containers, there are different arguments, right? So let's go to something called as readiness pro. This is a property using which you can identify whether the application inside that particular pod is up or not. So let's add this particular property. So here I'm going to add the readiness probe and the containers. So I'll paste it. So under the readiness probe again, it is a list, right? So if I click on the V1 register probe, so there is something called HTTP get. HTTP get will have to be the health check endpoint or the URL with this guy needs to validate. So in, in our case, our health check endpoint will be slash lazy. Right, because we have an endpoint called slash lazy, right? So the Kubernetes instance will hit that particular endpoint to check whether our application is up or not. So again, if you see inside HTTP get, there is something called path and then the port. I think we have to add it inside the path, not inside the HTTP get. So we'll have to say path and then there is a port. So by default, our port is 8080. So I'm going to use the same port 8080. So our HTTP request has been added. Now let's come back to the container section. So inside the probe section, we need uh, a delay. So which is what we wanted, right? We wanted an initial delay so that we can check how it is going. So I'm going to add an initial delay of like, let's say five seconds so that we can see what's happening inside the cluster. So there is something called timeout, the number of seconds after which the probe times out, but uh, by default, it's one second. So I'm not going to have uh, any timeout right now, but there's something called periods. So periods is that how often you need to perform the probe by default it is 10 seconds. And then we can have like, let's say five seconds, right? So we can have a period of, let's say five seconds. 
Now coming back, there is something called success threshold. The minimum consecutive success for the probe to be considered successful. Uh, default by default it is one, so I am going to retain the same, right? So I am not going to add any success criteria. So I have uh, modified my probe container details, saying okay, this is my health endpoint, this is my port, and these are the um, delays which I want to introduce so that I can go and check, right? So this is basically the health check endpoint, and it is going to delay after every five seconds. So let's try. Um, what is the version right now it's version one again we need to apply, apply a new one right so let me go to version two so i need to deploy a new version of the application so that i can check right how the deployment happens now i have created a script in this tab i have created a script called curl.sh right let me open the curl.sh so this is going to indefinitely uh, poll my url so this is my url now external IP address is different so what this will do is this will indefinitely poll this particular URL to check if there is any downtime so we are going to see that so that is to make sure that we don't have any downtime right because I want to show you that there is no downtime for this application so this is going to indefinitely hit their endpoint every one second so we will see what's happening so search curl.sh this is going to indirectly Poll my instance in the background. See that it's it's uh, polling. Let's now go to um, our main one and then main tab and uh, deploy our application. So kubectl apply hyphen f and cube.yaml. So this is going to now uh, deploy the new code which we should have the tech primers. Hello tech primers, right? Now let's hit it. Okay, so this has some validation error in the cube yaml. Let me go. I think I might have done some mistakes. Okay, the readiness probe um, should be under the name. I think I missed it here. Because these all should be under the same name, right, for each container. So I just missed that. Now let's apply the deployment and we should be able to see. Meanwhile, I'll also type kubectl get pods yeah this is going to give me the pods and this is going to show me how one by one the pods are getting deployed see that there's only one new pod right now and let me check if there's any downtime no response is all like 200 right let's do the kubectl get pods again see that a new pod got created and it's waiting for five seconds until it hits the end point and then it's going to create a new pod and terminate the existing one see that's what is happening so once the new pod got created and it's all good the existing one is getting terminated right that's what is happening and see at a time there is one more pod which is up i can see that again the new deployments are happening and there are two more pods which need to be created because these are all new pods if you see these two are like completely new these are something which we deployed a few minutes back so let's see what's happening I think it's all good right the deployment got completed so everything is all like within one minute so this is how a rolling update happens a rolling update i'll just summarize what a rolling update is so rolling update is when you don't want to have a downtime to your application when you want to deploy new instances of your deployments and kubernetes provides rolling update as a strategy inside the configuration itself and how do we do it by deploying a new instance of the deployment and then once a new deployment is successful then we destroy the existing one and that's how we do it for every pod this is how a rolling update is created inside a kubernetes cluster so i will add this particular configuration file into my kubernetes example so that you guys can take a look at it so it's a existing repo i'll just add these configuration files in the same uh, readme documentation so you can take it from there i hope you guys got an idea of what are the different deployment strategies recreate and the rolling update and we saw how we can do that in the kubernetes cluster in the next video we will see how to do blue green and canary deployments however we will be reusing these rolling update and recreate as a part of the blue greens and the canary deployments as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much